thank you all for your uh, patience with me as I talk about something I'm not super familiar with. <laughs> um, but in chapter seven, what we were discussing were model workflows. And a one key point that the chapter tried to kind of illustrate was that model workflows um, don't aren't just the model, that it's actually the parts before the model and after the model and the model itself that uh, are part of this workflow. Um, this also has uh, many other names, such as pipeline and process. And in the book specifically, that's, that's how they're gonna call it, a model workflow. And a couple of reasons for that is uh, it allows for better methodology with um, you know, everybody knowing exactly how they're going to start uh, the process or the workflow, and then just generally better organization for those involved. Uh, and so uh, that is one of like the, the key points and why we are talking about the model workflow today and how the workflow package helps, uh, helps that. So some examples of the things before the model are things like exploratory analysis, either looking at the data or just applying some, um, some context and expertise to decide you know, what, what variables are you even gonna use for the model? And then you know, things like feature selection algorithms and uh, other like computational stuff to, to decide variables, uh, things like imputation and scaling, and uh, the example that they had for the, the stuff after the model is like um, deciding on, on any cutoffs for classes uh, and just generally like taking what you learn from the model and the things that you do afterwards. And so in terms of examples, uh, this is a, a bad workflow example in that um, the, the illustrator of this just put the PCA um, least squares estimation as part of the model workflow, as opposed to, uh, you know, thinking about it more comprehensively. And then in terms of what's a good model workflow, that it includes the, the PCA itself. Um, and it's not isolated from each other. They're all part, part of the model workflow. And then uh, in the notes, they had another example, which I thought I really liked in terms of just uh, not just showing the parts of the model uh, what workflow, but also like the functions associated with it um, in order to get to the, the final prediction. Uh, but again, I, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we've gotten to, to bake yet. <laughs> uh, that might be part of the, the recipe uh, workflow, you know, which makes sense after a recipe, you bake the recipe. Um, but I did think it was a really nice uh, illustration of, you know, and really concrete kind of illustrates those steps in terms of like knowing how to start with your recipe and, and good organization for what you're gonna do next. So that's the first part of the chapter. Any questions, thoughts, um, examples <laughs> that you all have run into like in, in uh, trying out some models? With or without tidy models. What can I just ask the group in general? What what were they trying to say with the PCA being outside and that being a bad model or bad work workflow? What, what what are they trying to say there? Like the model is, I mean, it's part of the workflow above. It's just not part of the model workflow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand what the what the what they're trying to say there. I guess is my my question. Does anybody else? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess they're just saying that any kind of uh, data prep uh, things you're doing um, that impact kind of how your model turns out. Yeah, they, they wanted to include. So yes, yeah, so if you do the principal component analysis, you're doing, you know, presumably has some some benefits. So it's probably makes sense to think of it as part of your modeling process, I guess. Uh, my interpretation, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. How I kind of see it as if you have a general workflow that includes both PCA and least squares, you can apply that to any kind of data and predictor. So it's a more efficient way to structure your processing. But um, 
I'm not sure if that's the right takeaway or not. It makes sense. Yeah. And I feel like too, this is kind of an introduction to like the workflows package. Like um, instead of thinking like, oh, I have to do my PCA over here with, with this other package, it's actually all incorporated within, you know, the tidy models framework. And so I can think about it as all one big uh, workflow. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Okay, cool. So next up, we'll use the package to create a workflow, like we mentioned. And so for that, um, tiny models and then preferring the tiny models functions. And so first step is just setting up a, a linear model. And so we have that here. And so with the workflow package, uh, this is uh, kind of like like that, like not just doing the modeling, you can actually do the pre-processing things together. And so as always, we begin with a parsnip uh, model object, adding the linear model to that. And so if we run that, we'll see that uh, right now we still don't have any pre-processing, but we have the workflow set up in terms of like the model that we're gonna use and the engine that we're going to use. And so in then, we can add our processor. And in this case, it's adding the formula, which is, um, you know, we want to predict sales price based on longitude and latitude. And running that, um, we can see that uh, we have the, the preprocessor um, set up there, which is that formula that we gave. But there are other options uh, that they offer. So in addition to adding a formula, we can actually use the uh, dplyr kind of um, syntax to add variables instead. And so, so this is equivalent. So uh, instead of adding formula, we add the variables, sales price is our outcome, and then our predictors. Wow. And so running that, what did I do? Oh. Apologies, I don't know why I'm running into an error. Does anybody else know? <laughs> I, do you already have a workflow object defined with a form? I'm just looking at the error. Maybe yeah. it's like you need to re, if you named the second workflow something else or, or removed the first workflow. Because okay. you, you probably already. Ooh. Oh, I see. Maybe like change the name of this. <clears throat> Maybe is that, that this add variables that changes the roles for, oh, there. For, for the variables, and so you need to use add formula as well? Yeah, it, it, Laura, what you said was right, that I had to rerun um, the workflow and not use it again. Apologies, I had not run into that. I don't know why. <laughs> I would never have thought of that unless you had that error, honestly. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, just uh, re ran the workflow with a different name and then used it to uh, use the steep fire uh, syntax. So, I ran that and then running it. Uh, we can see uh, here instead of pre processor formula, which is what it said earlier. Now it says variables because that's how we are adding our preprocessor. But um, in terms of like the other things, like the linear model is still the same. The computational engine is still the same. And so that it doesn't throw an error again, I'm going to create a third one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will. And so uh, in addition to using that deep fire contact, uh, syntax, you can also use the tidy selectors. So like the ends with, contains, all those uh, fun stuff that you can do with um, uh, things like string R. And so for example, since latitude and longitude both end in two, it can say ends with two. Oh my goodness. What did I do now? <laughs> Oh, I think you need to use select oh. uh, if you're perhaps with predictors ends with it says. Uh, I think it, maybe I have to do the add variable. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. 
Thanks so for yeah, deep uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, there we go. <laughs> and then similarly, because it's with the deep fire stuff, it's still um preprocessor variables and everything else is, is still the same. Cool. I'm glad this is recorded. <laughs> uh, any questions about about this? <laughs> So the chapter then goes into kind of a lengthy section into why. Um, <laughs> and I would love to have a conversation about that because the way that I understand it is just like, there are some contacts, some models um, and some engines in which you will want to use different, different sorts of, of um, functions. So there are some times that you'd want to add formula. There are some times that it's easier to add variables. And it sounds like it's based on um, you know, that that information that you would decide what what it is that you want to uh, what you want to use in but welcome. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? I'm just trying to wrap my mind around. I, I think other people have made comments about this, like obviously parsnip, we, we saw that last week, right? So workflow, I can see how, like I said before, can be scalable and you know better or whatever, um, but it still seems like it would kind of be constrained to like one kind of data set. I mean, depending on, maybe it's just like super flexible and the knowledge is in, knowing it well enough to know when to use each like the add variables add formula and which which choice will be the best or at least close to the best and i don't feel like i have a really maybe i need to go back go and read the chapter uh really thoroughly and i'll understand better but um i don't feel like i have a good sense of that <laughs> yeah that's not a critique of your presentation it's just Mm -hmm. I'm trying to wrap my mind around the um, the tidy bottles, like you know what I mean. Okay, part like in Parsnip, there are certain things like we were doing GAMS um, in the uh, ISLR cohort, and you can only, from what I can tell, use that with Parsnip. I tried using a workflow, and mm -hmm. it did. You know what I mean? Maybe I yeah. did it wrong, but I think it's just supported in Parsnip from from what email have that felt? I'm probably totally butchering his name, sorry. What, that The guide that he has made for the ISLR book. So I'm like trying to figure out, okay, when's, when is it best to just use Parsnip? When is it, is it always better to use the model workflow if you can? Yeah, I agree. Like um, there's this part of the book where it mentions like the XG boost and that it uses dummy variables. But I think like, like I would not have known that. <laughs> like, um, you know, I feel like if I were running an XG boost package uh, or model, I would just be, you know, trying things until they worked and well, hopefully worked <laughs> um, at least until they ran. And so uh, I'm, I'm with you. I'm like trying to wrap my head around like, when do I know to use add variables, when to use add formula or when they're equivalent. So it doesn't really matter. Um, So I feel like it's it's kind of similar like to to last chapter as well. So so just what you said there, they're not equivalent. Isn't well, add variables like a, just not the formula interface of add the other one? <laughs> I forget what it's called. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I, well, yeah, I think like okay. So the way I interpret it is for like this simple linear model, then that yes. That they are, but then, um, for example, here they mention XGBoost, which uses dummy variables from factor predictors, and so, um, and so, there. So for sorry, where is it? Do, do, do. Sorry, I forget where exactly it is. But the way I interpret it is because it's the way XGBoost works that it's preferable to use add formula instead. Um, and I feel like there would only be a difference if they actually are uh, doing something different. 
well, your point your point was is that sometimes it works one way and sometimes it doesn't the other and that's what laura was saying from the islr group for gams yes that's right okay cool that's what i can find anyways and i haven't heard any, i posted it in our slack channel and nobody's commented on a way to do it <laughs> uh maybe they just haven't read it so <laughs> i guess yeah. this is still this is still in the works right <laughs> yeah i mean obviously tidy bottles is a work in in progress and that's fine it, i just i don't know why it's not compatible as far as i can tell with a workflow um object at this point but perhaps in the future hmm. Yeah, I wish I could find the sentence that I'm thinking about. Um, and so, and then another example that they gave was um, uh, this function uh, called model matrix. Uh, if any of you have used it, please let me know. But it seems like uh, there's times where uh, like a, a standard our function wouldn't be able to process a, a formula or a model. And so um, there is a way to uh, work around this in workflow. And there's a variety of different functions like add model, add variables that uh, allow you to use like these kind of um, more, uh, more like specific sorts of ways of processing formulas. And so in this example, this is a survival analysis. And so uh, with the workflow, you would add the variables like so. Um, this is, again, that kind of deep layer context or syntax that we were talking about. And then the add model afterwards. Uh, and so um, I think like this is just uh, maybe the, the spreadsheet that was shared before kind of goes into this, like the sorts of like when you are using the survival model, then you know to use this particular, um, you know, series of functions in order to be able to run it. Um, but I do know that uh, uh, Tidy Models now has uh, survival analyses, and so maybe this will be, you know, there'll be like a, a more, um, like a, another way at least in, in Tidy Models to be able to, to run it. And so uh, just following up on the parsnip part that there are, uh, that workflows also has a fit method. Um, and so this is the analysis from the previous chapter. Let's get up to here. And then that you could use this fit uh, with the workflow that we have up above. Oh my goodness. Why? Sorry guys, object dot is not found. Um, to be able to fit this model. Oh, sorry. Well, I debug any, any thoughts on this. Uh, workflows have a fit model. A method to create the model. Or, or if you know how to fix this, let me know. <laughs> yeah, actually, that was. Um, fit the model. It says t object dot not found. Yeah, do you have to? Well. So something is a old. Is there an old reference to workflow three, or are you using workflow three or workflow? Maybe. Okay. Okay. Here it is with the formula. Let me see if this works. Okay. Interesting. Cool. So right. I was. <laughs> so it worked with add formula. Should we see if it works with add variable? It works now. <laughs> Sorry, if something must have got a mix up in the, 
the all the all the different uh, objects floating around. Um, but it worked with add formula. It worked with uh, add variable, and then created the the uh, the fitted model that we had from the previous chapter. And then we could use predict just like before to get our predictors. And then there's this very nice uh, function called update formula to be able to change the formula. Oh, will this work? Right now, LM fit has add variables. I don't know, it worked. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> cool. Okay, cool. Thanks for bearing with that. Any thoughts on this particular part, the using the workflows with the um, with Parsnip? Not quirks aside, it's it's not too bad. Seems seems all right to me. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I guess this is just how I curve lots of <laughs> back and forth. Um, cool. And so then the next part just talks about uh, when you have you know lots of uh, different options in terms of the models or the formulas that you could be using that you could essentially create um, uh, the the span of all possible options uh, using workflow, which is pretty nice in terms of, uh, yeah, just like speeding up the process or if you're just like looking through lists of things that you could do that as well. Um, and so here's creating a list of all the different predictors, so longitude, longitude, the chords is both of them, et cetera. And so running that, you can create a workflow set. Uh, so doing that, if you run. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The ID are the different predictors that we had up above. And so then contained within these are the information about the different um, preprocessors and, and model configurations. And so within here, if we look at info one, which is here, um, the model is a linear model here. Uh, given with a formula because that's how we wrote it up here. And so option is empty. I, wrote, I did that just to check. <laughs> I was like, what's in there? And, uh, it's empty and then result also empty for now. And then uh, if we want to see what, what, what does this um, processor look like for each specific ID that you could uh, pass it this way to extract the workflow. And then this looks like the the workflow that we saw up above uh, up above with the preprocessor, you know what the formula looks like and the engine that we would be using. And so, uh, just to wrap it up, the way that you would work uh, use this is um, by using per in order to uh, you know fit the model. So th so this is an example of fitting the model and then saving it into a new. Uh, column. And so um, that you're able to use like the information like contained within this workflow set to actually, you know, run your model. And so if we run this, and see, maybe we can see, there we go. Uh, in the in the object location models now, if we go all the way, we see that now we have a fit column. So that's where that information is contained. And if we want to look at what it looks like for our first row, which is longitude, we can um, open that up and, and see what the results of that particular uh, um, model was. And so here it is against longitude and the coefficients that we got, and et cetera. Any thoughts about workflow set? Seem pretty cool. Yeah, I think, any way to do multiple things in one place. Yeah, just like do it really fast. Use it. Do it using per. Um, I think it's. I like it's, the 
I like the formula, the list of formulas that you can try all of them at once. And I assume we'll get to the point where we use broom or something else to pull all those um, fits and whatnot out and be able to do more with them. Is that next chapter? Um, no, that's maybe chapter nine. I haven't uh, read ahead. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, I think this is so I, I think this is so handy because, you know, so many times like, I mean, not not being a good uh, not following best practices and like copy and pasting and stuff and then like, you know, just changing longitude to latitude um, to be able to do this all all at once and have it all nice and neat in the list is, is very cool. Cool. And then in terms of the rest of the chapter, they kind of wrap up mentioning that uh, there's the workflow package also contains, um, you know, pre-processing and the modeling part of the workflow, but in terms of future plans that the post processors will also be incorporated. So that, that'll be super exciting too, to have everything all up in once. And that is what I have. Thank you all. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for uh, live demos. One day I'll get good at them. <laughs> you did fine. Thanks. Yeah, it was yeah. great. It was very useful. I'm surprised that you have to use PER to do the model fits. That seems a bit of a clue to me. Like it's maybe that's a missing piece. Is that what they mean when that's not post processing, right? That's processing. Uh, when yeah. you do the map finding, then when you do the map for adding the the feet of the rest of the model or the, the data. Sorry, Frederica. You're very the, quiet. The, oh. <laughs> I said um, I meant to ask the same thing. So about when she did the the fit, the, um, the last fit with the pearl using pearl. Yeah, I, I yeah, because you have had the information from other information and of the workflow, and then you can extrapolate. I suppose those are just those are just equations. The yeah. list. And so the fit doesn't have the data set yet. So you have to tell it that. And that's why you have to use map to iterate over it. Right. That I feel like, you know, it's like, oh, we have these functions we want to run, and per just helps do it to everything. Um, because sometimes you just want to extract the values that you want. But when you have a list, you uh, yeah. need to select information. But yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've never thought something like that to do something like that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Thanks for the tour, Isabel. Yeah, of course. <laughs> any any other questions or maybe a personal experience to share about these things? Any one of you uses uh, tidy models? Not yet. Still trying to figure out how to use it <laughs> myself. <laughs> Learning. Yeah. Yeah. The, I need like a. So the reason I wanted to join this group is that uh, you know I was running a a model and then I was like, is this right? Like you know, um, I I had not uh, read the book yet, and so I was like you know adding recipes, and then I was like, okay, I'll add these steps and things like that, and. And I'm like, I actually don't know if this is like the right way. Like, I, I feel like I need a, a model review, <laughs> like uh, to try things out and then like get kind of like, you know, feedback and critique of like, oh, this step is missing or this step, mm -hmm. you know, sh should be different or something like that. I, I, I find it tidy models is uh, like this way to, to make a model is would be it's useful uh, when you want to uh, use hyperparameters or certain 
different models. So for example, the workflow uh, lets you add more than one recipe to, to obtain a unified model. So you can add more recipe, more models, and then you have everything inside a workflow and then you run it and say, when you extrapolate the, the metrics, which one is the, is the best one. And you can think about the tidy models is like the ggplot, the thing uh, compared to the plot function. So the, the base model is like the plot function and the ggplot. Um, so in tidy models would be like the, the ggplot. So it's, you, you go inside the model and make add features and modification instead of having just a function to apply that everything. So sometimes it's good, but sometimes you want to, maybe you don't trust the function, which is, <laughs> which is work, but, you know, yes. you want... no, I understand. Sorry, I'm laughing with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, that was very, that was great, very clear, fantastic, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> Thanks. And so <clears throat> Federica, I might yeah. sign up for chapter nine. Maybe. Great. Yeah. Maybe. It's something I'm very interested mm -hmm. in how to like validate your model. Uh -huh. Um, but um but I need to make sure my calendar is clear the day before so I can really prepare. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh I think I think I'll sign up. I'll probably do that later today, uh, if things are okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, that that would be great. That would be great. So that that's our uh, book club. So we do whatever we want. Because um, I figure I'm useful maybe in the earlier chapters, and later I'm going to be less useful. So get you know, <laughs> get my contributions out of the way. Yeah. Sort of thing. yeah. <laughs> okay. So and then maybe uh, have some some examples as well. I don't know with with the application of the, the models. And then when we go through what, what is, who, who is going to do the, uh, so you, um, it's me uh, next week with feature engineering uh, and then judging model effectiveness. Uh, I'm sorry about the pronunciation. It's, it's a very good chapter. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did it uh, in the previous uh, court. So I started with, with nine, with chapter nine, mm. uh, and so. Okay. Well, that 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 that's that's very interesting. So I bet you you do a good job. Okay, uh, if we don't have any other um, I don't know, like experience to share questions, uh, we can just uh, uh, see each other next week. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So, good thanks, Isabel. Bye. 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 See ya. <laughs>